Hi, everybody. I am um, coming to you today to talk about a new class that I'll be um, co-presenting with a dear friend and colleague named Lynn Bell, who is a master astrologer, a wonderful writer, and a brilliant, brilliant teacher. Uh, we're doing a class called Being Swallowed by the Dragon. And I thought I would describe it to you because I am thrilled to teach this class. I am absolutely thrilled. Being swallowed by the dragon was a phrase that Lynn used when she was describing, we were talking about um, all the chaos in the atmosphere and that everybody's feeling and the cycles of change that are going on in the atmosphere, in the collective. And one of the benefits of having extraordinary friends like Lynn Bell and Robert Ohado, for that matter, and Andrew Harvey and all the other wonderful friends I'm blessed to have is that we have great private conversations. And um, Lynn was talking about this idea of that being swallowed by the dragon is, is actually a metaphor she used to explain the astrological forces of being pulled by opposition. And as we talked about it and described the forces at play in our collective, the forces that pull people in two opposite directions of, <clears throat> you know, what is truth and what is non-truth, what is a lie, what is right and what is wrong, what is female, what is male, what is left and what is right, what is up and what is down. And it reminded me of the nature of Pisces, two fish swimming opposite directions, and that we are coming out of an era where we took great comfort, humanity took great comfort in being able to divide things very clearly. This is right, this is wrong, this is a man, this is a woman, this is left, this is the Western Hemisphere, this is the Eastern Hemisphere, this is you know, that we we divided things in this thinking, this polarity thinking, and it kept order and it kept the systems working. And you're a believer, you're a non-believer, you you know, this type of thinking. But in these last decades, we have been shifting. Evolution has been on a track of transforming us to holistic thinking. And we've been comfortable moving into holistic thinking so far as it takes place within our health, holistic health, applying it to our bodies, applying it to an illness, approaching our health in a holistic way, thinking, well, what's my whole body need? Because this is safe territory. We, you know, looking at your health holistically doesn't cause you necessarily to approach the whole of the universe holistically. It's, it's limited. You don't have to apply it to a whole view politically or economically or globally. You can limit your holistic resources to yourself and think, I'll apply it to how I eat or how I approach my health. And even then, you can limit it to, I will, you know, maybe holistically recycle and consider that my contribution to the environment, but maybe I'm not into climate change. So we've taken holism in a very limited way because the concept, the template of becoming a whole planetary community and then entering the galactic community is so overwhelming. Becoming a planetary community of equals, of shifting our way of, you're either an American or you're not, you're either British or you're not. Our polarity thinking would have to break down and evaporate forever. And yet, if we, if you look at what's happening and you take holism at, at its truth, at its truth, 
you realize that you can't go back in terms of your health. You can't say, you know what, this holistic idea, I'd rather go back to fractured, a fractured approach to my health, which is just treat one organ and leave the rest of me alone. Just treat this illness and never mind how I'm feeling, never mind what I'm thinking, never mind if I had any traumas in my past, none of that matters. Just treat the organ. You can't do that anymore because it just doesn't make sense. You have to treat the whole of you or you won't heal. So holism is now imprinted into us because there is an inherent truth to it. And if that holistic, holistic truth is imprinted in us, in our bio-spiritual ecology, it is getting transferred to the greater template of how we have to live as human beings. And therein lies the chaos that we are experiencing in the collective. But it's also in the planetary forces, as if to say it's time, it's time for us to participate in this evolution toward becoming a whole community of human beings, not separated by race or sexuality or religion, but joining together because <clears throat> in terms of the mystical laws, all is one. And in terms of the mystical truth, we co-create the quality of life on this planet together. And the challenges we are facing, climate change, um, pandemics, collective illnesses, collective air issues, collective water issues, have to be resolved together and not, you can't legislate them. You can't go up to a glacier and say, sign this paper and agree not to melt. <clears throat> it is a collective effort. We, as a species, we have an archetypal um, uh, function in us that when chaos strikes, we do a couple of things. One, we look up. We look up, we think, what's going on here? As if the heavens are going to answer us. But we do that, we look up. And, but there's something in us that has this inherent sense that there is a reason or reasons. They're not logical, they're not legislative, they're not legal reasons, they're not social reasons. So what happens in society is the result of something greater that is unfolding. And planetary information, astrological data, holds clues as to why and how our evolution, the direction evolution is taking. When I was in graduate school, I had this professor, and we were studying scripture, and of course, scripture is full of astrological references, including the Star of Bethlehem and, and the Magi, and, and uh, he referred to something. And at that time in my life, my whole exposure to astrology was the column in the Chicago Tribune that said, if you're a Sagittarius, today's going to be a good day, this kind of nonsense. And I couldn't believe that a, prof a Jesuit professor, a Jesuit priest, was, you know, into, into astrology. So after class, I said something to him like that, you know, kind of a smarty res response, to which he replied, I won't have a conversation with you until you've studied astrology, and then we'll engage in a conversation. And that really impressed me. And so <clears throat> it turned out that two blocks from where I was living in Chicago, there was 
a school for astrology that I had never noticed. It was called the Astrologer's Medium. I had never noticed it until he said something. And so I, I stopped in there and I signed up for my first class and then my second class and then my fifth class and then my 10th class. And if I had a backup profession, I would be an astrologer. It, I simply would have to study a lifetime. What I just came out of those classes with was a reverence for astrology, not just a respect, a reverence for it. And no science that has existed for thousands of years is nonsense. It is absolutely brilliant. And it takes forever to really understand the subtle influences of the cycles that have influenced human life and evolution. I mean, just what from another point of view, I now teach that God is law. I have come to believe from a totally different track as a medical intuitive, someone been in healing, someone in my own mystical life, my own interest in, in my own fascination with consciousness. I, I now feel passionate about teaching for the rest of my life, bio-spiritual ecology as a theology, because I realize, I have come to realize that there is no off-planet God, but that God is law, written into the laws of everything. The planetary cycles, the order of the universe is an order, is in order, because it itself is its own theology. There is a reason why everything is cycled and so perfect. And in that perfection is its own information. Anyway, we're in a cycle that is chaotic and brings about change because we need to go from polarity thinking too holistic. And we're not going to go there without a fight. Nobody changes without a fight. And it's not a small change. It's a transformation. So in this course, we're going to examine these, the challenges of this type of chaos and what we can gain from involving planetary instruction and apply it to you personally. This is the name of the classes. The first one is, is through traveling through cycles of chaos and finding hope, and then identifying what really matters to you. Our third session is the ingredients, the, the essential ingredients of the inner self. You know, discernment, reflection, the powers that the capacities you have within you. Our session four is how to break through the cycle of possession. I don't mean demonic possession. I mean about being possessed by illusions that really anchor you to times that are leaving us. Then fear or freedom and how we have to examine our fear of being liberated from the times that are really evaporating and where we're going. And finally, how we envision our new future and a new collective future. So it's going to be a delicious class. I mean, it starts June 15th and June 16th. It'll be two days in a row, and then we go next the following week to every other day. And so I am hoping you're going to join us for this wonderful, wonderful course. I can't wait to teach with Lynn. I've taught with her before. I've known her 30 some years. And oh my God, she's brilliant. So come join us. Next, I'm going to be interviewing Lynn on Monday. So we'll chat about the class and there'll be another, then we'll send another video. So the two of us will chit chat away and uh, fill you in even more. But in the meantime, I hope I've just given you a sample of what a delicious class is ahead of you. Thank you, everybody.